Hi, I'm AJ, and it's my turn. Welcome to the Extraordinary Times. Now, if you're just joining us, as I said, I'm AJ. If you've been here before and you're wondering where my wonderful co-host is, you need to go watch yesterday's show. So our first story of the day, our continuing coverage of the GOP convention over in Tampa, Florida, Mitt Romney has been formally nominated as the Republican Party's presidential candidate. Of course, everybody saw this coming. We never really thought anybody else was going to get it, but it's formally been done now, so the race can finally be kicked off, at least on the... Republican side, no, like it hasn't already, but whatever. They, they've got their, their points now, check out yesterday's show, and they, they've got, you know, the whole race going, they've got their ideas, and now they have their candidate, so let's get it going. On the other side of convention news, Condoleezza Rice is having a bit of a problem. Well, actually, nothing really happened to her, but people tried. The group Code Pink, a activist group against the war in Iraq, tried to storm into the convention and put her under citizen's arrest. Really? They were turned away by the cops because one, it's a private residence. You can't do that. It, it, it is illegal. And as soon as they did, they went and covered themselves in, in blankets covered in blood. Second of all, really? Really? This is what you're going to try and do is, is try and put every single person in government that has some part in the uh, Iraqi war under arrest? Are you going to try and uh, arrest the president? Overall, I just see this as another extremist group trying to gain attention. Similar to PETA. No real point just trying to BC, whatever. Speaking of stupid, <laughs> it's kind of sad, but marijuana has gone through, of course, a full battery of studies, and as we've talked about before, there hasn't been really anything they've been able to find that's really actually negative. Up until now, a study published in Proceedings of the Natural Academy of Sciences has discovered that smoking marijuana, at least during your teenage years, can, and that most of the time does, permanently affect your IQ in a negative way. In fact, it can drop as much as 8 points overall. Now that may not seem like much, but that drops you from about a 50% chance of having a lower IQ of uh, the next person you're talking to, to 75% chance that you're, you're going to have a lower IQ than random Joe on the street. This kind of switches things around a little and actually puts it a little bit more possibly towards legal things, similar to saying make it illegal for those under 21 or actually probably more 24 since you're, uh, a lot of men's brains actually don't stop developing until about that age. Overall, though, this may actually bring it to the, the wider area of, of legal uh, status, simply because we know the danger now. On a side note, they did discover it lowers the IQ of adults as well, but adults are able to recover, whereas teenagers are not. And speaking of stupid stuff, <laughs> there is a former, now, fifth grade teacher over in Atlanta, Georgia, that has been accused of helping her students cheat. Now, this sounds kind of crazy. I actually do know a couple teachers that might have done something like that, not going to name any names. The crazy thing is her reason for doing this. She says, quote, it's because they're dumb as hell. Really? You're a fifth grade teacher. These kids are... They're kids. Their brains are still developing, as we just talked about. Of course, they're not going to be as smart as you. That's why you're their teacher. You are supposed to try and teach them, help them learn what they do not know. Helping them cheat is not going to teach them anything besides, well, how to cheat and that the system gives things to them. We do not need any more of that. Anyway, like I said, she is a former teacher. There's still a whole arraignment going on, whatever accusations going on left and right. Hopefully this gets taken care of soon. And I really hope this is just an isolated case and not something that's actually rampant across this in the United States. I hope this isn't rampant across the United States either. This next story wherein a deaf preschooler has been told he cannot sign his name in school because it could be, well, not offensive, but a reference to weaponry and could be dangerous. Really? Little Hunter Spaniard. And like I said, deaf from birth. Signs his name, something like this, and he said, cross the, the fingers and raise the hand up and down. I'm thinking it might look something like this, so it might look like a gun. His name is Hunter. It's a sign that is specifically designated for him, and it's actually registered as his name, the name Hunter. And he's being told he can't do it because it could be dangerous? I'm, no, how many kids do you know? That just, you know, go around, bang, 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 and playing like guns as kids. Anybody can do that. 
What are you going to do? Outlaw fingers? That's all you can do. Anyway, this is completely stupid. There's a lot of people who are just outraged about this. Uh, check it out if you want to get involved because I, I know there are people out there that would be interested in this. Anyway, it's just absolutely crazy. I think the school's going downhill. Except for maybe this one in Israel. This school uh, may seem look, uh, rather modern and may look rather nice, but it is also designed to withstand rocket attacks. Uh, I don't really know what to think about this, because it is near the, the Gaza Strip and everything. It is uh, near a lot of danger there. There have been schools that have been hit by rockets in the past, thankfully empty. But at the same time, do you even really want your kids going to school in such a dangerous area? Do you want to be living in such a dangerous area? I don't know how the Israelis do it. However, they are saying this will make things easier for the students, make it uh, so they can concentrate on schoolwork instead of having to listen for a siren every two seconds and running out. Overall, like I said, I'm kind of even sided on this. And for our last little story of the day, a little bit connected to the, the trouble in the Middle East, Blizzard has joined in on the embargo of Iran by banning World of Warcraft to that country. Uh... <laughs> This is, I, 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 I shouldn't be laughing, probably, but I know how addicted people can get to uh, World of Warcraft, and who knows, this may actually inspire uh, the Iranian people to uprise and realize what's going wrong with their country. Uh, <laughs> anyway, this is, once again, thank you for joining us um, here on Extraordinary Times. Like if you liked it. You know, favorite and all of that up uh, over there. Subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Please watch on YouTube. Share us with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, or just, you know, hand to hand. Whatever. I don't care. <laughs> as long as you share us around. Be aware. I got some popsicles falling in my basement.